Hi everyone and welcome back to the Shanae Show. When did the- I think I was doing this all like basically all my introductions. The clapping as I did the introduction. Whatever. Let's go to Barnes & Noble. I'm also expecting my book of the month box within the next couple of days. So I'll include an unboxing of that in this video once it comes. I will be going to Universal the day after I'm recording this section and the box might be arriving when I'm at Universal Studios. So I may end up opening it a day later, but I'll open it within this video and talk about that a little bit. But with that said, let's talk about the books that I got at Barnes & Noble this time around. There weren't a whole lot of books that were catching my eye. It was kind of surprising me. It kind of not surprising partly because i had a 50 dollar amazon gift card and i didn't want to go too much over that but at the same time i think also part of it is just that 2024 hasn't been 2024 ing like the new year hasn't been new year ing if that makes sense just like christmas wasn't really christmas ing basically the point of this is that the holidays aren't doing their holiday thing but i did get a couple of things that i was interested and was half planning to get first up i got volume four of yasha hime princess half demon by Takashishina and Rumiko Takahashi. I have read the first three volumes, really enjoyed them. Now I just need to read volume four and then hopefully in the near future I can start watching the anime because I need to. And there were a couple of other things that I was looking for in the manga section and that being the next volumes of the Omnibus, the Vizvig edition of Inuyasha. I was specifically looking for volume four of the Inuyasha Vizvig edition. They only had volume three which I have and then volume nine I think of the Vizbic Inuyasha editions and then I was also looking for volume 5 of Fruits Basket but they only had like three and then seven or eight and on and for both Inuyasha the Vizbic editions and the collector's editions of Fruits Basket I didn't want to get the later volumes without having the volumes in between like for Fruits Basket I have up to volume 4 and I didn't want to start with getting volume 7 when I don't have 5 and 6 and with Inuyasha Again, I have three, but I didn't want to go to nine without having five through eight. It's just me being a little bit nitpicky with the additions I have in the volumes. And a large part for me is the fact that I want to try to keep up with the volumes I have and read the volumes I have before getting later editions. Fruits Basket is an exception to that because I have read the full series, the full manga series before years ago, so I'm just letting myself buy them before I start my reread. That is an exception, but with any other manga I get, I really want to stay on top with actually reading them before buying multiple volumes. So that's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, I got volume four of Yashihime. I just saw the mailman. I'm kind of hoping that they have my book of the month. I checked a little earlier today the status of my book of the month box and I think it was in Las Vegas. I didn't, I didn't look at what day that it was in Las Vegas. I'm, I, I, I'm hoping they have my book of the month and that they just didn't update or that the system was taking a little while to update. Anyway, the next three books that I got out of the four in total that I got from Ranjanobel are cookbooks, baking books, bread books, 
well, baking books specifically. Two of them are bread books. But the first one is Rage Baking, The Transformative Power of Flower, Fury, and Women's Voices. And this is by Kathy Gunst and Catherine Alford. I wonder if they're both Catherines and they had to distinguish. So one of them was like, I'll go by Kathy and you can go by Catherine. Because it's basically the K's. Creepy. Anyway, not creepy, but interesting. So I picked this up. I was just hanging out a little bit in the little cookbook section at Barnes and Noble. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just kind of look through a couple of these, see if there are any that catch my eye. And the title of this one was like, oh, rage baking. That kind of calls out to me a little bit. I love baking. I do. But sometimes you do need to relieve some stress during baking. And I work as a baker at a bakery. And sometimes you just need to, you, you can't really let it out at work, you know? when you work as a baker you can't let it out that way just because you really do need to make sure you have a good product whereas at home if you rage bake if it doesn't end up great it doesn't end up great but at work it kind of has to end up pretty good anyway not the point so i saw the title and i was looking through it and there are little stories and then a bunch of very interesting recipes there is a grape and rosemary focaccia i don't know if i'll do the grape i might do olives because i love olives and then there is a where is it there's don't call me honey cakes there was another one that i was seeing somewhere um let's see if i can what's a buckle i don't know what a buckle is oh okay that makes sense for this one it's blueberry buttermilk buckle fresh blueberries cause the top of this cake to buckle and caramelize into the batter while baking okay that's why it's called a buckle i thought it, i thought they meant actual like belt buckle or seat buckle which is what i know about baking even i bake <laughs> oh yeah grape and rosemary focaccia maple one pull apart bread all that there's this one too they don't show an actual picture of it it's a black onion, lemon, black onion. It's a bacon, onion, lemon, and black pepper flatbread. And it sounds really good, but at the same time, I feel like they could have just said like bacon and onion. And then if someone asks like what else is in it, then you can say like lemon and black pepper. Because bacon, onion, lemon, and flat, because that name, bacon, onion, lemon, and black pepper is a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, I got this should be interesting. This video is turning out a lot longer than I expected, but editing should help that out a little bit. Next up, I got Evolution in Bread by Ken Forkish, Artisan Pan Breads, and Dutch Oven Loaves at Home. I really need a Dutch oven. I really want a Dutch oven, but they're kind of pricey, especially the good ones. I saw that my boss had this, and I decided why not try to look for it, and I saw it, and I decided to pick it up because I want to try more artisan breads that have that crustier crust because I like that kind of bread. I saw a cat, the cat I saw, he's the bully of the neighborhood cats. Um, if you want me to start showing some of the cats I can, there are two that mainly come to my place. There's a tuxedo cat, we call him Grumpy Tux, and there's a black and white, I don't know if he's really a tuxedo, but like black and white patchwork cat, and we call him Mosaic or Mosey. I sometimes call him Mosasaur. Anyway, I got Evolutions in Bread and I really want to start doing these a little bit more. Hopefully I'll get a Dutch oven in the near future. And then last but not least is another bread book called Bread Book. And this is by Chad Robertson with Jennifer Latham. Latham. I think the colorful cover called out to me a little bit because I love colors, but it's also, the sections are also color coded and they have a kids section. Like good breads you can make for kids and they also include like sandwiches you can do for children on that bread which i think is great because sometimes like if you can't find a good hobby for a kid like get them into baking a little bit like obviously supervised depending on the age but let's move on to my book of the month box opening It is two days later. I actually ended up opening my book of the month box last night after I got home from Universal Studios. The book that I got was The Good Left Undone by Adriana Trigiani. Trigiani? This was one of the member favorite choices just because none of the books for January were in January? January. None of the books for January were interesting me. This was part of the member favorites, as I said, and this was the only one that was really interesting me. And I kind of 
I didn't want to skip this month, so I went with this one. So just a brief little description about The Good Left Undone. Matilda, the Caprelli family's matriarch, has always been brusque and opinionated. Now, as she faces the end of her life, she's determined to share a long-held secret with her family about her own mother's great love story with her childhood friend, Sylvia, and with dashing Scottish sea captain, John Laurie McVickers, the father Matilda never knew. I'm pretty sure this is a dual timeline book, which usually hits well for me, at least with the Natasha Lester books. They've always been pretty solid, the dual timeline books and we'll see how this one goes when i get around to it i'm not quite sure i'll let y'all know if you've read the two books the manga yashahime volume 4 or the good left undone let me know down below in the comments what you thought about them and if you've used the baking books that i've got if you've used any of the recipes again let me know down in the comments which ones were your favorite least favorite thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in my next video